This is 757 Saturday Sports Talk with Matt Hatfield and Coach Ed Young on ESPN Radio 94.1. Time here on 757 Saturday Sports Talk. We're joined by a couple of special guests. You know our good friend from Sports Inside and Out. Go check out the podcast, the website, sportsinsideandout.com. A living legend from Norview High School in Norfolk, our friend, Coach Charles Hatcher, who once again brings us one of the best ever from the 757. He started George Washington High School in Newport News, an NFL player with the Kansas City Chiefs and Philadelphia Eagles. He's in the College Football Hall of Fame, where he was a two time unanimous All American at Purdue, and he gives us, as Coach Hatch likes to say, the keys to the game. Leroy Keys with us here on ESPN Radio 94.1. Gentlemen, hello. Thanks for coming on the program. It's September. we got lots of football to talk about. Oh, we're glad to be here this morning. That's Thank right. you. Hey, 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 Leroy, the keys to the locker room is in the hands of uh, that actor. Okay, we're ready to go. Well, let's get to it. The uh, Virginia Sports Hall of Famer Leroy Keys with us here, as well as Coach Hatcher. And uh, Leroy, I want to get to the Chiefs and the Eagles, a couple of your former teams, as well as a couple of things going on in the league. But let's start there with mm-hmm. one of the guys that you're on the Mount Rushmore of Purdue football with. Uh, you, <laughs> along with Bob Greasy, Rod Woodson, Drew Brees, the future Hall of Famer, the Purdue great, 41 years of age. He outduels Tom Brady in week one. But you know how it is with the pundits. Week two, people are starting to speculate, is he over the hill after the team loses to the Raiders? That's how quickly the overreactionary sports world can be. A big test coming up here in prime time for Breeze and company at home against another great one. It's a signal caller and Aaron Rodgers of the Packers. Do you see Breeze and the crew bouncing back just fine? Well, Matt, I, I would like to say yes, and but I'm going to put a little question about possibly no. Okay. Until they get Michael Thomas back, the wide receiver, I mean, Kamara is going to get his, mm-hmm. but you need Thomas on the field. He, he brings another presence to the field that Drew feels so comfortable. If everybody else is covered, Thomas is going to be wide open. And I think right now uh, the, the Saints are saying, until we get him back, we don't know what we, what kind of team we really have. And looking at Sean Payton's face on the sideline is a lot of wrinkles coming across his forehead that he didn't have two and three years ago. And so, but I know Drew Brees, Drew is a winner. Uh, I think the Saints will find a way to get the other players more involved and not wait for an injured player to get back to try to get them over the hump. So I'm, I'm looking for Drew to rebound and because I always tell everybody, once a baller, always a baller. And I think Drew Brees re- recognized the fact that, hey, what goes on through the organization, what goes on through the what we do in the locker room with the New Orleans Saints come through Drew Brees, number nine. And he, he'll be ready for the challenge. Uh, he's not going to let any over the hill because I guess he heard it with Brady, he's heard it with Philip Rivers, he's heard it with Aaron Rodgers. And once you turn, once you turn thirty, you're old anyhow. So <laughs> I think Drew would say, "Look, I'm I'm forty, so leave the age alone and let my arm do my let my arm do the talking for me." Sure. And there's some compelling quarterback matchups this week here in week number three of the NFL, Leroy. I mean, you got Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson on Monday night, which we'll get to, I'm sure. You got Deshaun Watson, Ben Roethlisberger. You got Dak Prescott and Russell Wilson, Derek Carr and Cam Newton. And I think this uh, Breeze Rogers matchup, you better appreciate it much like we did with Brady and Manning because it's two of the very best to ever play the position. And when you get a guy like Breeze at his age and you question him, much like people did in the offseason with Aaron Rodgers and the Packers draft and a rookie there, I think it sometimes brings out the best in players. And it does. I mean, you know, all, all the players, especially quarterbacks, very sensitive, but yet they are the leader of the team. I mean, everybody in the locker room is looking at that particular person. And they look at them with total respect. As long as we have a quarterback and we keep them standing upright, we have an opportunity or we have a, a, a legitimate chance to win every week. And, and I think Drew Brees has created his own legacy by saying, look, I'm, everybody question my height. They said I was too short to play in the NFL. He proved them all wrong. Uh, he has, like you stated earlier, Matt, his ticket is already uh, printed and waiting for his induction into the king. And so the bottom line is now he's playing with guys who were probably still in high school when Drew started his career. And these guys are saying, wow, I'm in the locker room with Drew Brees. This is, um, this, uh, let me take a picture with you saying my mom, my girlfriend, my fiance, family member. But Drew Brees is so down to earth that I don't think he will let this rumor mill because he wants to be in the picture with the Aaron Rodgers, the Philip Rivers, the Tom Brady, the Deshaun Watson, 
Dak Prescott. You name all of the current quarterbacks who are starting today, and he said, "Hey, I've proven that I belong in the elite class, mm-hmm. and he's an elite." So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried about Drew Brees, but I know Drew is not worried about records. What he doesn't say, Drew is about getting the job done and bringing a winner to New Orleans. Before I get to the uh, Chiefs and the Eagles with you, Leroy, we're talking with Leroy Keys, the great out of George Washington Carver High in Newport News, along with our pal Coach Charles Hatcher, Sports Insider, and out here on the Legends of Sports Update on ESPN Radio 94.1 at a 757 Saturday Sports Talk. Uh, Leroy, the most touchdowns scored through two weeks in NFL history this year with 186. Do you chalk that up to the offenses getting better, the rules making it harder for the defenses, a combination of both, no preseason? What you think? I think it's a combination of all that you just mentioned. You know, I hate to say it like this, but every now and then I think sometimes the officials need to kind of put uh, gorilla glue on their flags. <laughs> um, for some reason, they're tossing these flags so so crazily, and uh, you're looking at pass interference. They're keeping drives going. You see wide receivers taking the flop, holding on to each other. But for some reason, the officials... And I'm not blaming the officials, but they, they they seem not to be in the right position. But when you see the touchdowns are going, the rate they are going, the offense is so far ahead of the defense right now. Normally, it used to be reversed. Uh, the offense was always trying to catch up to this defense. But right now, you got some players out there who are just saying, look, the first week, uh, because we didn't have a uh, long as training camp that we are accustomed to, everything because the COVID-19 has been cut, all the testing to make sure you're okay mentally and physically has probably taken a toll on a lot of the guys on the defense. And all the rules, the horse collar rule, the hand to the face, pass interference, uh, the offense is saying, hey, man, look, if, if they're going to grab us in the, and, and, and let us get a free first down, 15 yards, spot files or whatever, uh, the, the offense is just saying, hey, look, you can't, you can't beat an NFL team when they get inside the red zone. They say 85% of the time. They're going to find a way to kick a field goal. They're going to find a way to find that big tight end open across the middle. And they're using the tight ends. But the running backs now, these young guys are saying, the Gale Sales, and I'd like to pay condolence to the Sales family for the loss of Gale Sales, a yes. great, great human being. And that's why I think when they had that Gale Sales award and you see it on the jerseys of those who have won it in the past. But uh, I think right now what we're seeing, Matt, is these running backs, guys who are unknown, who are coming on strong. This Josh Jacob from the Oakland, uh, Las Vegas Raiders. Mm-hmm. I said, who in, the, who in the hell is Josh Jacob? Where did he come from? <laughs> this kid is moving mountains. I, I was thinking about trying to get him up on that on that mountain with, with Rod Wilson, Bob Breezy, Drew Breezy, and myself. <laughs> he's a load, but he's, a, he's quick, he's fast, he's strong, he keeps moving. He reminds me a lot of Sha- Shaquan Barkley. But the bottom line is, the bottom line is, these running backs are saying it's our time to the quarterback's going to get theirs anyhow. But as running backs, we got to get across that goal line as best we can and take the heat off the quarterbacks when we get in the red zone. Hey, you're absolutely spot on. I mean, these running backs ascend into stardom real quick, whether it's a Jacobs there with the Raiders or an Aaron Jones with the Packers, a Clyde Edwards Hilaire, the young pup out of uh, LSU with the Chiefs, and on and on. And as a defensive player who starred there, Leroy, I mean, I'm curious to get your take, too. There's With the no preseason, it hurts, I think, a lot of people, offense, defense, you name it, but especially more so the defense. And we're seeing a rash of injuries, I think, at a higher rate than ever as well. Well, and, well Matt, again, it's, it's one of those things. You prepare – in the off season to stay healthy. You get into the gym, you're working out, you're following your nutritionist, and you're saying, eat this and don't eat this. We need to see you uh, at least in the weight room four or five times a week. All of a sudden, you didn't know if your teammates were even going to be on the same team, and you're going to go into the locker room with the environment being the way it is now. The fear factor, life versus the pursuit of happiness. Right. A lot of these players just said, are we going to have a season? So the doubt was out there all doing from January until they finally said, let's button up the chin strap. Defensive backs, uh, unless you bring your whole team into a bubble, you're not working out every day. And then when you are working out, you're not working out in full gear. And all of a sudden, then you go up against an opponent, and this guy is, is, is in tip-top shape, and he's, he's still running that 4 2 four, three, 40, and your back pedal has slowed down to a 4-5. And the NFL, uh, cornerbacks and safeties can't take a day off. Because these wide receivers, uh, I watched the catch that uh, the young man or the Dallas Cowboys made that night, uh, the fingertip grab, I forget his name. Amari Cooper, yeah. 
Oh my God! I'm saying, look at this catch. Yeah. Nowadays, these kids are catching one hand grass better than we were doing it with two hands. <laughs> and so I'm I'm amazed, but I'm yet as an old veteran of the NFL, I sit back and I just marvel and say, Oh my God! These kids are becoming more gifted. The running backs are running harder. The offensive linemen are bigger. Uh, and they and they just they just moving the whole wall. I mean, you guys going for a first down and they move the line 10 yards for a walk, another 10 yards move the chain. And so I'm not surprised, but the bottom line is these running backs are coming out of college nowadays. They are ready for the NFL. Uh, well said here with the Virginia Sports Hall of Famer out of Purdue, Leroy Keys here, George Washington, Carver High in Newport News. All right, I got to ask the guy that was selected third overall by the Eagles in the 1969 NFL draft, right behind OJ and right before Mean Joe Green. The Eagles, they're 0 2, Leroy. The world's crashing down. Carson Wentz is facing his fair share of critics, and they got some injuries. They look to avoid falling to 0 3 when they host uh, Joe Burrow and the Bengals. Can the Eagles uh, get it turned around and win the NFC East again? No. No. Okay. <laughs> right now, the Eagles have so many question marks that they really don't know what they're going to do. And Carson Wentz, I like Carson Wentz, but I'm not in love with Carson Wentz. Okay. And right now, when I look at Deshaun Jackson, he's going to get his catches. But I look at the Eagles' offensive line getting older. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. Peters need to... Either say thank you, Philadelphia, for, for allowing me to play for this many years. But the bottom line is, he can't block his shadow right now at that left tackle position. So they try to move him inside, and he was exposed inside. So when you see one of your premier players being beaten repeatedly, it casts doubt across that whole offensive line. And Carson Wentz basically is almost in that same motif that Andrew Luck was out here in with the Indianapolis Colts. I can't take this beating constantly. I'm running for my life. I'm throwing the ball up in the bleachers. Receivers can't get open. The receivers that he used to have, when you lose Aguilar and you lose some of the other receivers he had, Deshaun Jackson coming back is a, is a blessing, but he can't win the game by himself. The Eagles need help all across the board. So I don't see the Eagles. If, if the Eagles, I don't think the Eagles can beat the Redskins this year. And I think the only team the Eagles can beat in the division is probably the New York Giants because right now the young quarterback Jones with the Giants is having his moments. But Dwayne, Dwayne Haskins is having a fairly decent, a great comeback they had against Eagles last week. Showed you that Dwayne Haskins is going to be for real. And I can't see the Eagles beating Dallas, and I can't see them beating the Redskins, and they're the two teams that are going to be ahead of them. Yeah, and uh, Carson Wentz was on his back eight times against the Washington football team in week number one. And you're, you're, you're absolutely on the money there, Leroy, with the quarterbacks. Luck had a short window. The Colts didn't surround him with the right protection. And we're seeing a similar situation with, say, a guy in Atlanta. He's got weapons in Matt Ryan, but the Falcons continue to find ways to blow games. And he's much like an Andrew Luck, top of the uh, league, among the better quarterbacks. And they just can't get out of their own way in some of these close games. I want to finish up with you, Leroy, and I could spend all day with you and uh, Coach Hatcher. I'm sure we'll get you back on the show with the uh, reigning Super Bowl champion. You played for them before. The Kansas City Chiefs take it on the Baltimore Ravens on Monday night. It's rare you get a matchup of arguably the two best teams in the league this early in a season, week number three. What do you make of this compelling matchup there, Mahomes and Jackson going at it? Well, if you got two variations of greatness. One, Lamar Jackson, because his throwing motion, his ability to throw the ball downfield has always been a question mark, even when he was at Louisville. He still finds a way to beat you with his feet. Patrick Holmes is going to beat you any way he can. If he can bounce it off your helmet, if he can skip it, if he can throw a sidearm, if he can change hands, if he can lateral it, Patrick McHolmes understands what it means to win. Well, I look at the situation that he had with his father when he was a young kid, whether it was going to be baseball, football, soccer, or whatever. This kid is well-skilled. Lamar Jackson is well-drilled. Uh, he has to work a little harder than Patrick McHolmes to understand that once you get to the NFL or once you make it to the, the granddaddy of all, the NFL, there's certain things that are going to be expected of you. But Lamar Jackson is a winner, and so is Patrick McHolmes. But the Chiefs have something that the Baltimore Ravens don't have right now. They have a Super Bowl win under their belt with McHolmes in charge. And Andy Reid is a 
I think Andy Reid is a great coach, not taking any away from Harbaugh in, in Baltimore, but I think Andy Reid and his coaching staff does a better job of preparing. Because when you got to Reed Hill out there and he's running rampant, in, running like a monkey in your secondary, you, your defensive backs are, are shaking and quivering the whole game. Like, <laughs> hopefully, I hope he's not coming to motion to my side. Go the other way. Reverse field. And then you have a running attack that is getting better. They're understanding where the holes are now, the cut, where the cutbacks are. I just like the Chiefs because I think they are a more solid team. But I love watching Lamar Jackson play because he's excitement from the word go. So I think it's going to be a great game for Monday Night Football to get this game this early in the season. This could be a prelude to what the Super Bowl may look like on the third week of the season. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I think it should be a game to remember. Absolutely, you can catch it all right here on ESPN Radio 94.1 on Monday night. The Chiefs and the Ravens hit the airwaves a couple of 757 greats. Derek Nadi out of Ocean Lakes High in Virginia Beach with the Chiefs and Charles Clark out of Kings Fork High in Suffolk, a former Virginia Tech Hokie with the Ravens. And speaking of a 757 great, we're privileged to be talking with two of them here with Coach Hatcher and Leroy Keys, our special guest here on the Legends of Sports update out of George Washington Carver High in Newport News. Part of that Mount Rushmore with Breeze, Greasy, and Woodson at Purdue. Gentlemen, Always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Go check out sportsinsideandout.com for so much more with legends like Leroy and others with Coach Hatcher. And, guys, we'll do it again sometime soon. Uh, we're going to do it. Hey, hey, thanks so thank much. You. And, again, thanks for all our, our supporters and fans down in the 75 Southern area. Matt, really appreciate you down there, buddy. And thanks for letting us come home and, and be a part of giving the news that they can use. Uh, 757 with Matt Hatfield. Thanks a lot there, Doc Cummings. And, Dr. William Brown, PTMG. Here we are. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you, man. guys. So there you have it. Leroy Keys with us. We're going to come back with week number three in the league where they play for pay. The NFL picks. Yours truly, Matt Hatfield, 6-0. and The coach, Ed Young, is 3-3. Three and three. Dino Franza looks to go to 2-1 and one on his dogs. It's all coming your way. Are you ready, Ed? No, but I, I will get ready soon enough. All right. It's coming your way next on ESPN Radio 94.1.